BBC Radio Sheffield. Right, I'm going to take you back. Way back. Back in time to four years ago. On a trip down memory lane. When who knew that this was a stupid idea? Council contractors in Sheffield have this morning begun chopping down trees in Rustlings Road next to Encliffe Park. There has been a campaign for more than a year to try to save these trees. Of course, the contractors who are doing the roads say that the trees are dangerous and are damaging the pavements. But local people say they're a valuable local amenity. This is Rustlings Road. Whilst it's still dark. Our man Mick Looney is up there for us. He's going to tell us how things are looking right now. Good morning, Mick. Good morning, Toby. Yeah, mature trees, very tall alongside the park, and some would say looking glorious and should have been left well alone. But quite a few of those trees this morning, there have been notices on them, of course, for some time that they were going to come down, but those trees felled and in pieces along the roadside, yet to be cleared away. I drove along up Ecclesall Road this morning towards Rustlings Road and it looked like a scene from, uh, it might have been a, a riot or a major crime scene or a football match for crowd control because there were three big police vans blocking the entrance to Rustlings Road off Ecclesall Road. Five o'clock this morning, cars have been towed away on Rustlings Road. Under the cover of darkness, Jackie's up there now. Morning, Jackie. Uh, well, apparently at about five o'clock this morning, we were our door was knocked upon, but we didn't hear it. Uh, and then we heard the noise of the, um, the um, you know, the saws. Um, and I approached the police and they said that we tried to knock on the door, but we didn't hear them and they removed two of our vehicles. That's um, And our tree's gone. <clears throat> Where did they take your car to? Uh, they've taken it to a nearby road. It was unbelievable at the time. I remember speaking to Brian Lodge. And say, I, I'd say it was just crazy. If a copper knocks on your door at five o'clock in the morning, he's there to tell you that somebody's dead. That's why police knock on your door at five o'clock in the morning. For no other reason than that. And certainly not when they've been told to go up there by, by Amy. It was crazy. It was the 17th of November, 2016. Nearly four years later, Sheffield City Council have been told they must apologise for their actions around the tree felling programme. In a report published by the local government and social care ombudsman, they found that the council did not act with openness and transparency when removing trees across Sheffield and when dealing with people's complaints about that work and that it should apologise to the people of the city. The cabinet member for environment, street scene and climate change at Sheffield City Council is Councillor Mark Jones. He joins us now. Good morning, uh, Councillor Jones. Good morning, Toby. I hope you're keeping well today. You too. It's been a long time coming, this, hasn't it? It has, it has, yes, absolutely. Um, but but with all things that are significant and important, sometimes it does take a bit of time to reflect and, and understand the mistakes made. And um, the Ombudsman has, has done that. It, it took a wee while for the Ombudsman's report to come back to us. Um, but they, they've considered the complaint from... Um, it the, didn't the, need considering, uh, did it? It was quite obviously the, one of the most stupid things the council's ever done. Why didn't you just apologise before you yeah. were told to? To be, to be honest, um, Julie has put out many, uh, Councillor Dorr, that is, has put out many report, uh, apologies already and said sorry for the incident. Should we have knocked on people's doors? Should we have been doing tree felling at five in the morning? Absolutely not. It, 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 was, it was an idiotic decision made in very difficult times. I, I, By I, I'll hold my hand up to that. Um, I, that bit is not particularly covered off as whether it was made by officers or who made that decision. That's not covered in the report. Um, no, 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 I don't need the report, do we? Who did, who did it, do you think? Who, who, uh, somebody I, I must know who made the decision. I, 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 I can put my hand on my heart and say I, I don't know who actually pressed that button and actually made that decision. Um, unfortunately, it's not covered in the Ombudsman report. So it you're apologising because that. you've been told to, but you can't be bothered to work out, to look at actually what happened. No, you just no, did it if you're told. Um, it, it, it's possibly, uh, um, it, it depends. I, I think there is still some learning to be done. We do need to respond to the Ombudsman. We do need to understand why we came to this position. The Ombudsman report says that, that it recognises the difficult position um, and and that, that's not particularly an excuse, but it's a mitigation. No, there's no um, point we... apologising if you've not learned from it, Mark. Yeah. And the fact that you don't know who made the decision means you haven't learned from it. You're wasting everybody's time. Why, well, why, the, why, the, why, the only thanks thing very much indeed for talking to us this morning, but yeah. what's the point? 
the, the thing for me is that, that without, I, I don't want to be pointing fingers at officers of the council or, or members happen. of the council. We, 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 will, we will learn from this process. We will be reflecting on this process. The, 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 the position that we find ourselves in with the new Street Tree strategy reflects the fact that we know we've got it wrong and we've got to do things better in future. And, and that's where we're going to. And, and the Ombudsman report as much says that we are doing good work now. Now, at some stage, once we get this report out of the way, we had to wait for this report from the Ombudsman so we can make, make the apology to the complainants only. Uh, and we have, we have done that and uh, we will continue Mark, to review our processes and learn. You, yes. If you don't know how the decision was made and you don't know who made it, then you categorically aren't learning from your decisions, from, from your mistakes, because you're not bothering to find out who made the mistakes and how it, was, how it came to. They're, this is just a hollow apology because you've been caught out. No, not at all. Well, who I know decided exactly, it then? I, 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 no, I know exactly where you're coming from. Like, I, I know myself that when sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll tell my children off for doing stuff, and they'll say sorry, and, and you're wondering whether they're saying sorry because they've been caught out, or whether they're sorry for what they did. Are we sorry for the way that the uh, position deteriorated with street trees? Absolutely. It should never have gotten to that position. It really, really shouldn't. We, we were trying to do the best thing for this for the roads and to make them better. You don't know how we got, got there. there. Not yet. We, I, I, I still not do not know who was privy to that. What we are going to be doing is we're going to be taking all the information from all this debacle, all this failure, and we're going to be putting it into the public realm. And we are going to be able to make sure that everything is out there for people to go through. We're going to be putting that into a depository and we will make sure that we learn those lessons. From the process of this Ombudsman report, it is, this, this doesn't draw a line underneath the street trees issue. Far from it. This, this is just another step in us learning a very difficult and painful lesson. Yes, absolutely. We got this wrong. We should not have done this. We, we were not as open and as transparent as we should have been at all. We have caused distress to, to the complainant's family and the complainant themselves, and, and, and I'm sure to the wider, some, some members of the Sheffield public. We know that trees are still very contentious. The ones you tried to put in prison? Um, we didn't try to put anybody in prison as such. We Ju Julie, said, Ju Julie, Julie, Julie said she wanted them to go to prison. So and um, the, ones, the ones that you could okay. potentially bankrupt, they, 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 they also had a little bit of stress. But it, despite yeah. all of that, and with the four years under your belt, you've still not bothered to find out how that decision was made. That's incredible or not true. Which one I, is it? I, it's incredible that we were in a very difficult position. Officers have moved, uh, people have left, things have moved on and progressed since then. I wasn't so you're not bothered to find out who's done it? We, we, we will keep reviewing everything right, that give, we're give, doing. Do us, and a we're, do we're, us a favour. Give us a call when you find out who it was, please. Because there's only a list of about four people who could have, it could have been, isn't there? I, 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 Julie possibly, it I could don't be know. Julie, it could have been Paul Billington, it could have been Brian Lodge, I suppose it could have been the chief executive, although I very much doubt it. It could have been Mick Crofts. Who else could it have been? I, 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 I don't know. Uh, Thanks very I, much indeed. That's the councillor who's in charge of street scene, who doesn't know who made the decision. It's Toby at Breakfast, it's BBC Radio Sheffield. If you want to get in touch with us today, then you can. 0800 111 49. 49. We have Benoit Compound on the line, I do believe. Good morning, Benoit. Good morning, Benoit. Hello, I got you. Benoit, of course, you at the time were taken to court, weren't you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been listening, listening for a little while, and I mean, I don't understand how, I mean, what Mr. Uh, Jones is saying, really, because, I mean, if he hasn't got those answers, I'm pretty sure I've got them for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, the, four years, the, apparently the council haven't bothered to find out whose decision it was to go out yeah. at, at five o'clock in the morning and get police knocking on doors. That's either incredible or not true. He says it's incredible. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's just like I'm, I've been trying to, 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 to get the council or Julie or Paul Billington, who's left, or Gillian Duckworth, uh, the head of legal yeah. government, to give me answers about my arrest and the ways they've... Uh, 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 Totally fucked me off and uh, and uh, and, uh, and not even answered or dared to 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 even uh, acknowledge anything about 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 the time because I I still have to pay nine thousand pounds to the council and last time I uh, I heard about them they wanted to enforce uh, these costs on me 
Uh, just reminded, Ben, well, but, 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 well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, because I, I, I wasn't aware you were there, I'd come to you a little bit earlier. Just remind us quickly why, why you were arrested and why you still owe him nine grand. Well, that's a long story, I'll try to make it short, to be yeah. fair. Uh, I was arrested on uh, my mom's birthday uh, on Abidel Park. Christ, it was the third or the fifth, no, the fifth of uh, March, I think, 2017, on a day that... The council probably knows that very well. It was uh, Operation Quito Day when they come to Abidal Park Rise with over 30 police officers, 10 bouncers from Amy, and obviously the workers to try to push all the protesters up the street to cut certain trees. But because they didn't, they couldn't reach the tree they wanted, they tried to fence uh, the tree that was before the tree they wanted to get. But all the protesters knew that they couldn't cut the tree, it wasn't on the list, so they were wrong at the first place, and uh, somehow I found myself inside the barriers, and they were putting everyone out, and uh, they decided to jump on me, and uh, I sort of defended myself, <laughs> and then they called for an assault, and uh, they wanted to arrest me and all this, but at the end they didn't get me for assault, they got me for a breach of injunction. And, and what's the nine thousand pounds? Oh, that was twelve something at first. Uh, yeah. That was uh, that was to to help the council repay for the court costs that they spent trying to get me in prison or get us in prison because there's few people. Ben, well, the, the, the council has now apologised. Does that close it off for you? Oh, he's apologised. Oh, very well. I'm so happy about this. Uh, I just want to know what I got to do with those £9,000, really, because council did, didn't accept my offer to pay £10 a month. Maybe it was a bit low, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, but at the time, I didn't. I wasn't really motivated to work my ass off to start repaying this thing, so I've just been waiting for this time. So I'm just, I'm, I'm asking the councillors, really, what you want to do with these £9,000, because I could do something with them. Benoit, yeah. thank you very much indeed. That's Benoit Compin, who is uh, a little bit fruity language towards the end of the interview there, and that's what happens when you put the Gallic people on. Uh, Benoit, of course, was... Uh, he still has the Council Nine Grand. I wasn't aware of that. There you go. Traffic and travel now. We've been talking about trees being cut, cut down this morning. Sheffield Council says it fully accepts the findings of a report